Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How are you doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 1 class. And today we are going to wrap up linear equations and graphing linear equations. We've learned a lot in this chapter. This chapter has been long, but uh, very, very useful. Uh, remember, everything we learned here is going to be seen again and again and again. So please make sure that you review and practice and know all your skills. Today we're going to learn something called, uh, something called absolute value functions. We've learned how to solve absolute value functions already in the past. If you remember, if I told you solve x plus 3, for example, equals 5, if you remember there was a positive side, the mirror image, and then there's a negative side, okay? The negative side, which you multiply the non-absolute value by a negative 1. So you'd have x plus 3 equals negative 5. And then you solve, and x would equal 2, or x could equal negative 8. We've learned how to solve these, and that's awesome. Now, we're going to learn how to graph them. Now, I'm going to teach a little bit differently than most people teach it. Most people teach this by using a table. There's nothing wrong with the table, except that it's extremely time consuming, and you can make more errors because you have to actually make computations. So I'm going to show you a little trick, which is going to be used later on in your math career with other functions, with actually any function. So learn this today. It's going to be very useful for the day of tomorrow. OK, so absolute value functions render or make or give a V-shaped graph. It's not a U-shape, but a V-shape. Remember that absolute value is the distance from 0 and always has a positive and a negative root. And that is why the V-shape occurs. Because if you look at my examples down here, there's the positive side of the V and then the negative side of the V, right? So there's always a positive and a negative side, hence why it's a V-shaped graph. Okay? It's based on a linear function, though. Absolute values are based on a linear function. So absolute values, the V is going to be straight. It's never going to be curved. It's like having two linear equations combined into one. One of them is the positive side of the equation. The other is the negative side of the equation. Does that concept make sense, at least? So, okay, thank you guys. Now, when we look at an uh, at a, at a absolute value function, I gave you two here. I gave you one that's positive. That's over here. This is positive. And then I gave you one that is negative, and I'll explain how you can tell the difference and how it works. But I just want to show you both types. You can see very clearly that it's a V. However, if you notice this point right here, where the two lines intersect, I don't care what kind of math you're in, when you have two segments or two lines that intersect at a corner, that is called a vertex. And in this particular case, the vertex is the minimum. Why is it the minimum? Because this is the lowest value possible. From this value, don't we just go up from there? So this is my lowest possible value. It's a minimum. So when I have a V-shaped graph, when I have an absolute function, absolute value function that is pointing upwards, I am looking at a minimum. If I look at a negative absolute value graph where it is pointing downwards, I still have an intersection point that is still called my vertex, but in this case it is a maximum. Because if you think about it, the graph this is the max that it goes. From this point, it only goes downwards from there, correct? So when, it's, when the absolute value function is pointed upwards, the vertex is a minimum. When the absolute value function is pointed downwards, the vertex is a maximum. Now, you may be wondering, what are these little letters HK? HK are the symbols for the vertex. I'm going to show you where to find those right now. But when we're talking about a vertex, HK is the vertex. 
Everyone with me so far? We're just a picture of what an absolute value is. Okay. Okay, now, there are two methods for graphing an absolute value function. First one, make a table. Simply make a table of values using the moral five in addition to as many other x values as are needed in order to create the v-shaped graph. This method is time consuming and can lead to simple calculation errors. You can do it, but this is the problem. When you make your table, let's just say you go negative 1, 1, 0, 2, negative 1. I'm just making up values. Let's go, uh, I don't know, um, 1, 1, let's go uh, 2, and then 4, and 4. Okay, actually, yeah. Actually, let's not do a table. Let's just say that you have table values, and they only go like this. People are going to graph just a straight line. Why? Because we're human beings, and we're going to forget, oh, wait a second, this graph has to V out. So what happens is, you're graphing your points on your table, and you think you did well. You said, okay, I graphed five points. Oh, no, there's not a V. What do you have to do? you got to keep plugging in points until you see that it goes up on one side. Exactly. A lot of more people went, oh, yeah. you got to keep going if you make a table. Who knows how long? Sometimes you get a V in four, four points. Sometimes it takes seven points. Sometimes it takes nine points. And you have to guess which one it is to make the V. So you can do it. I do not suggest it. I suggest the translation method. It's a lot easier. It is a much easier way to, f to identify the vertex of the given absolute value function um, graph and follow the slope on either side of the vertex. So let me explain how you read an absolute value function. The A. The A is kind of like a slope. If A is greater than 0, if it is positive, it will open upward. That's how you know if it's going to be upward. And remember, if the graph is pointing upward, you have a minimum. If A is less than 0, okay? So if A is greater than 0, it opens upward. If A is less than 0, it opens downward. So if you have a positive in front of the absolute value, it's going up. If you have a negative in front of the absolute value, it's going down. Yes, sir? If you have an A that is a 0, then all of this cancels out, and Y equals K then. And if you have Y equals just one value, what kind of a, what kind of a graph is that? It's a horizontal line going through the value A. So if A is 0, then you don't have an absolute value function. Thank you. Good question, sir. All right. So the A, if it's positive, it's opening upward. If it's negative, it's opening downward. So if you have a negative absolute value function and you graph it and it's opening upward, you messed up. A also works like a slope when you're graphing, except... Remember how when we're graphing linear functions, you always run to the right, correct? For absolute value functions, you first take the slope and run to the right, but then you go and take the slope and run to the left as well. Because remember, you have the positive and the negative side. I'll explain all of this with our example. Are we good with the A? H. H is a horizontal shift. Horizontal means it's going left or right. But the H that you see here in the problem, the real H is always opposite of that. Why is it opposite? Because there's a negative sign here. I have X minus H. Since I have that negative, the H will always be opposite. What am I talking about? Let's say that H equals 3. I have X minus 3. But what is the true value of H here? 3. Now, if h equals negative 3, I'm going to have x plus 3. But what is the true value of, of, of h here? Negative 3. So please remember 
that when they're in this format, okay, whatever you see here, the real H is opposite of that. So being said, if I have a negative H, it's really a positive, so I go to the right. If I have an um, oh, look, I'm, if I have a positive H, it's really a negative, so I go to the left. So the H there, it's a left or right movement, and it's always opposite of what is given. If I have a positive, if I have X plus a number, I go to the left that many units. If I have X minus a number, I go to the right that many units. The, the true H is always opposite of what's given. And last but not least is K. K is straight up, vertical shift. If it's positive, you're shifting the whole graph up. If it's negative, you're shifting the whole graph down. Okay? So again, A, if it's positive, points upward. You have a minimum. A, if it's negative, the graph points downward. You have a maximum. A also works as the slope. It's the rise over run, but you've got to take it to the right side and to the left side. The H is a left or right rightward movement. It's a horizontal shift. It's opposite of what's given. So if I have X plus a number, that H is really negative, so I go to the left. If I have X minus a number, that H is really positive, so I move to the right. And then the K is outside of the absolute value sign. It's all by itself, and that literally shifts the whole entire graph up or down. Does that make sense? Now let me show you how easy this is. And remember, one last thing I forgot. Remember how I told you HK is the vertex? HK. Right? So let's, let's, let's check this out. <laughs> I want you to graph Y equals the absolute value of X minus 3 plus 2. Find the domain and range afterwards. Okay. First thing. I want to find my vertex. That is the first thing you do here. And my vertex is HK. Please remember that the H is opposite of what's given. So having that in mind, what is my vertex for this particular function? 3, comma, 2. Does everyone see how I got that vertex? You promise. Promise. Okay. So now graph it. One, two, three, one, two. Everyone graph the vertex. Um, you're going to love me after two seconds. Just graph that vertex and you're going to see how awesome this is. Just for giggles, what's the A here? What's the A? One. Very good. It's invisible. So there's a one. What did I tell you the A also acts like? It's, a, it's also a slope, right? So this is positive. So am I going to be pointing upwards or downwards? Okay. And the slope is 1, correct? So please, don't write anything. Check this out. From the vertex, follow the slope to the right and to the left. So go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Go back to the vertex. Now go to the left. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Guys, you never have to make a table again for absolute value functions. Did I just blow you away or what? Come on. That's, you got to admit, that's pretty, it's pretty slick, right? Okay. Now, for those of you who, who see it but don't really grasp what's happening, this is what's happening for real. There's something called a parent function. A parent function is the most basic of all type of functions and every type of function has its own. There's a parent function for linears, for quadratics, for cubics, for square roots. For absolute value, the parent function is right here. If I made a table for the parent function, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, I'm going to get 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. This is the original parent function. Okay? The one in black. You with me? Yes. Now, pay attention to what I said. Remember that the H moves it leftwards and the K moves it upwards, correct? 
How many spaces do I have to move, left or right here? Three. Three to the left or to the right? To the right because it's opposite. So check it out. One, two, three. And don't I also have to go up two? So from here, one, two, three, up one, two, boom. 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 So you could do it like that. That's the way most books teach it if they don't teach it with, an abs with a table. They say, graph the parent and then shift it. But do you see that's a bit of a mission? Because you've got to graph the original one and then you've got to shift it. Later on in math, you're going to have to do that, whether you like it or not, when we get to more complicated graphs. But for right now, you can just use our trick of graphing the vertex and then follow the slope from the vertex to the right and to the left. Yes, sir. <coughs> No, 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 no. I'm not even going to repeat the question because it was not valid. No. Uh, you're thinking, I'm proud of you, but no. I don't want to confuse the people. No. Yes, sir. Yeah? If, it's, if, if the parent was negative, then it'd be going here. Then the parent would be going downwards. But you'd have a negative out here if it was going to be negative. You feel me? But you don't have to do the parent method, guys. I just like to teach you the right way. I like to teach you what's going on. I want you to understand that the original red graph that we had came from this original black graph that we have. What did we do to this black graph to get to that red graph? I moved every point three places to the right and two up. Does that make sense, what I did? All right. Now, let's continue, though, with our trick, though. All right. It's not really a trick. It's mathematical. All right. So, first step always. What's my vertex here, my boys? Oh, and you know what? My bad. Go back. My bad. Sometimes Mr. Morrill forgets things. The second part of this question was, what is the domain and range? Okay. The good news. The domain for Balmo, well, yeah, the domain for every function that you're going to see right now, every linear function, every absolute value function, every quadratic function, the domain, the good news is it's all real numbers. If you remember, the domain of the possible x values, correct? Yes. Right? So, okay, check it out, guys. So you can understand what's going on. This graph keeps going on forever, forever that way, and forever and forever going on that way. You with me there? Okay. At this x value, is there a y point that's attached to it? At this x value, there's a y point. 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 I'm not trying to be annoying, but I'm trying to help you understand what my board just said. At every single x value, I'm going to have an attached y value. Does that make sense? Every x value here is valid. You feel me there? You understand that, what I'm saying? So the good news, domain, all real numbers. Now, the range. The range is a little bit different, okay? The range, if you remember, are the possible y values. Well, the, the range is really easy to look at. The range is talking about the up and down values, the y-axis. So let's look at this graph. What is the lowest y value for this graph? What is the lowest y value? Like, is there a y value here at the 0? Is there a y value when y is 1? Is there an x value there? Is there a y, an x value when y is 2? So what is the lowest y value? 2. So this is as, as low as it goes, correct? From here, it can only go upwards, right? So my range is 
y must be greater than or equal to 2. Because any value less than 2 does not exist on this graph. Does that make sense, my friends? Yes. You with me? Yes. All right. Now, let's graph. Let's graph each and find the domain and range of each function. So first, th first things first, am I going to be pointing up or downwards, first of all? Down, great. So am I going to have a maximum or a minimum? A maximum, very good. What's my vertex here, gentlemen? Negative 1, 3, awesome. It's always the opposite of the H. So you graph your vertex. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, boom. What's my slope here, gentlemen? 1. What's my slope here, gentlemen? So remember, you always run to the right when you're graphing a linear equation. But when you're graphing an absolute value equation, you go to the right and the left. So I'm going to go down 1, 2 over 1. Down 1, 2 over 1. Now I'm going to go to the left. Down 1, 2, 1 to the left. Down 1, 2, 1 to the left. Boom, boom. That is my graph. What is my domain? All real numbers. What is my range? No. What is the, the highest, highest y value that is attached here? 3. So y must be less than or equal to 3. Doesn't it only go down from the vertex, guys? So the vertex is my max. That's the max that it can be in this case because it's going down. So my highest y value that is valid here is y is less than or equal to 3. It could be 3, 2, 1, 0, and it could keep going down negative forever. But do I have an x value when y is 7 here? No, I don't have an x value there. So it's not part of the function. Does this make sense, gentlemen? Yes. Okay. Next. Number three. What is my vertex? What is attached? What's the h here next to the, to the x? What's inside of here? Really? Zero. Zero. Remember, guys, the h is not being multiplied to the x. It's being added to the x. Is there anything being added to the x inside of the absolute value? So my h is 0. What's my k? Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What's my slope? Negative 1. Down 1, 1 to the right. Down 1, 1 to the right. Now go the opposite. Down 1, 1 to the left. Down 1, 1 to the left. That is my graph. What is my domain? All real numbers. What is my range? Y is less than or equal to? Excellent job, gentlemen. Y is less than or equal to 5. Yes, sir. The domain will be all real numbers always. Because doesn't this graph... Keep going here to the left forever, forever, forever. Aren't all of these x values that have to be calculated to get these y values? So since the, the, the graph is going to the left forever, isn't it going to the right forever as well? So since it's going to the left forever, all of these x values are valid. Since it's going to the right forever, all of these x values are valid. Why does the range stop? Because the range stops right here. That's as high as this graph goes. There are no more valid y's above this y of 5. From here, the graph only goes downwards, and those are all valid. That's why the range is less than or equal to 5. Does this make sense? These are great questions. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Okay, let's continue, please. All right, what's my vertex here? Zero, negative two. So, zero, negative two. What's my slope? So, up one, one, two, three to the right. Up one, one, two, three to the right. But it's an absolute value, so i got to go right and left. So, up one, one, two, three to the left. Up one, one, two, three to the left. Connect the dots. 
That is my absolute value function. What is my domain, please? Okay, all real numbers. I'm going to show you a symbol now to help you out. If you do a line, then another line, and from the first line make an R, that means all real numbers. That's not that I made it up. That's a real symbol. Sir, <laughs> it, if the slope is a fraction, you it's a slope. Rise over run, of course. But the thing is here, sir, that if it's an absolute value, you got to run both to the right and then to the left. Thank you, sir. What is my range here? Y is greater than or equal to negative 2 because that's the limit of the Y. It does not go any further down. Does that make sense? All right. Number 5, what's my vertex? Negative 4, comma, negative 3. Excellent. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1, 2, 3. What is my slope? 1. So up 1 over 1 to the right, up 1 over 1 to the right, up 1 over 1 to the right. Up one over one to the left. Up one over one to the left. Up one over one to the left. That's my graph. What is my domain? All real numbers. And what is my range? Y is greater than or equal to negative three. The vertex will always tell you the limits of your of your range, guys. Have you noticed that? The vertex always tells you the limit. That's your max or your min, remember? In this case, this is your minimum. From here, you can only go up. When it's upside down and it's pointing downwards, that's your maximum. From there, it can only go down. Is this making sense, guys? Are you seeing the bigger picture here? You promise? Okay. Because it's going to be huge for you in Algebra 2. Okay. And... That's it. Thank you very much. Hope you learned a lot. Yes, sir. The question was, are there a certain amount of points that you want? I want at least two points to the right of the vertex, and I want at least two points to the left of the vertex. So I have five points in total. The vertex, two to the right, and two to the left. Thank you, sir. Great question. Thanks again, guys. Hope you had a great lesson. Hope you learned a lot. Bye.